So we've created our virtual machine. We've been running it for a while. Now we want to make some changes to the virtual machine. It may be because we need it to have additional hardware, additional capabilities. It may be just because we're having performance issues and we want to see if we can improve performance on it. How do we do that? So we're going to right click on our virtual machine and click settings. And this will give me all of my configuration options. So I can add additional hardware, add another SCSI controller, which will allow me to add another virtual hard disk or virtual uh, CD-ROM drive. I can add a, another network adapter, which will connect it to, which can be connected to another virtual switch. So it'll make this virtual machine multi-homed. And then if I have remote FX or fiber channel adapters physically, then I can add in virtual uh remote FX 3D video adapters or fiber channel adapters. Now, if you're doing servers, you're probably not going to care too much about doing video adapters because we don't typically want to run, you know, 3D video on a server. That's not what we use it for. All right, so let's walk through a few more of these options. So the firmware, how do we want to boot? And at the moment, I don't even have a CD drive in here, but if I had a CD drive, then I could you know, move these up and down to choose which I want to boot from. I'm basically just changing my boot order. Security, I can enable secure boot or disable secure boot. I can enable TPMs. I can set security policies to enable shielding of the virtual machine. Under memory, I can set how much memory I have and whether I'm using dynamic memory. Now there's a couple of things here that we didn't have when we created the virtual machine. When we created the virtual machine, it gave us the option to set to enable dynamic memory, but it didn't let us configure it. This is where we can actually configure it. So I can enable dynamic memory and I have two options, well three options if we count this one. Mem uh, minimum RAM, maximum RAM. So the minimum RAM says this system cannot go below this amount of virtual memory. So let's say I started it out with four gigs of RAM and I'm not doing anything. Well, it might only be using a server will sometimes will use, you know, 700 uh, meg or so of RAM if you're not doing anything with it. So if I do that, Hyper-V might drop my RAM way down to, you know, 700 meg or so. Well, if I don't want it to go that low, then I can set my minimum RAM, and that makes it faster to be able to use that memory. Now, because I've got dynamic memory enabled, if my system starts demanding more and more memory, I can associate more with it, or it'll automatically associate more with it if I'm using dynamic memory, but that'll sometimes take it a little bit longer than if I just have a minimum amount of RAM set. Now, the other side is what happens if this thing starts hogging memory? So this will come into play if I have multiple virtual machines. Both of these settings will actually. If I have multiple virtual machines, I might want to make sure that I always have a minimum amount associated with this one. But I might not want this one to overdo it and take away from the other virtual machines uh, and not let them have access to memory. So I can set a maximum amount of memory. Now the memory buffer here is how much do we reserve? So it's currently set at 20%. If I have a system where the memory amount usage fluctuates regularly, I might want to set a little bit more of a memory buffer. And then the last option here, and basically what that says is whatever the system's using, give it this percent more. So if it's using one gig, give it 20% more. So it has a little bit of a memory buffer to work with there. Now, this last option here is memory weight. Now, this comes into play when there's contention between virtual machines. Let's say I have four virtual machines on here, and all of them are wanting more memory. And so now they're contending because I don't have enough memory to feed all of them everything they want. Then we have to decide who gets the memory. Right? If there's contention, we have to decide who gets it and who doesn't. And we do that by adjusting the memory weight. So we might take our higher priority servers and give them a little bit higher memory weight. We might want to take some things that, like a print server, it's okay if it runs a little bit slower. We might want to give it a little bit lower of a memory weight. Now, some of these settings are kind of mirrored, some of the concepts 
are mirrored here in our processor. Now notice by default all devices or all virtual machines are given one virtual processor. Now if I've got more virtual processors because you know multi-core system I can add additional virtual processors to improve performance on the system. So let me go ahead and drop this back down. Notice when I went over to it started giving me some information. This is, is configured with two sockets, uh, one NUMA mode per socket, virtual processors, memory available, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I can set my number of virtual processors. Then I've got some options down here, machine reserve, machine limit, and relative weight. Okay, the machine reserve, mis, um, reserve and limit are set in percentage. So, I want to reserve 10% of my processing time. So, that means that 10% of my processing time will never be used for any process, any virtual machine except this one. That guarantees that this one will always have, even if it's not using it, it will always have 10% of the processor available. If somebody else wants to use it, they can't, it's reserved for this one. Using it or not doesn't matter. That's always going to be set aside for this virtual machine. Nobody else can touch it. The flip side of that is the limit. How much will I allow this thing to go to? So I'm going to say 50. So we'll let this, I'm going to switch this back down to 1, 2, just for the fun of it here. Talk about why here in a second. So this has a virtual machine limit of 50%. So we cannot use more than 50% processor time on one processor. Now notice right here, percentage of total system resources, these are automatically calculated, right? So <clears throat> I'm using one processor, 10% of that time is going to be reserved for this PC, which is a total of 5% of my total system compute resources. It cannot use more than 50% of that processor, which would be 25% of the total system resources. So this sets that floor and that ceiling. And again, we'll adjust these to kind of balance if we're running multiple virtual machines, the same way we did with memory. Now, we'll also have a relative weight. And this does the exact same thing that the relative weight does in the uh, dynamic memory settings. If there's contention, who wins? And so again, we'll take higher priority servers and we'll sometimes give them a little bit higher relative weight than maybe some lower priority servers. And this is where we kind of choose. If I'm running multiple VMs and something has to slow down, what's going to be the thing that slows down? And ideally, we don't run into that situation, but sometimes we do. And so this allows us to adjust for that. Let's go to our SCSI controller. Now in my SCSI controller, I can now add a hard drive, DVD drive, DVD drive, or shared drive. So I just select the one that I want, click Add, and that will give me, since I chose virtual hard disk, that gives me my next virtual hard disk. Now, notice this doesn't create one, but it does give me the option, well, this gives me the option to create one, which will be, just click it, through that whole hard disk setup, which does give us right here fixed size dynamically expanding differencing. Here I can set it on my additional hard drives, just not on my primary one when I create the virtual machine. <clears throat> Little side note here if you create a virtual machine with no hard disk and you come in and add one here, then you can do the new hard disk here and it'll take you through the new hard disk wizard and let you set fixed size. If it already exists, I just uh, click browse. Now, here's the other thing I can do. If I have a physical disk in my system that is marked as offline, which means I've gone into Disk Manager, said mark this offline, physical computer is not going to use it. If I have one of those, I can choose physical hard disk and select that, and that physical hard disk will then be associated with this virtual machine. Okay, let me cancel this. I want to do, whoops, I canceled more than I wanted to. That's okay. I'm going to go back to settings and SCSI controller. Now, I didn't create a DVD drive, so I have no way to install an operating system other than PXE boot. But if I don't want to use PXE boot, I can choose DVD and add a DVD drive to it, which I can choose 
whether we're using no image <coughs> or set the image file. And I would choose the image file, choose the file that I want, and there we go. That will now function as a virtual CD drive. And then last but not least, our network adapter. A couple of things here you need to be aware of. Number one, which switch it's connected to. <coughs> Remember, we can add multiple network adapters, and we can attach them to different switches to create this as a multi-home environment. I can also set a VLAN ID. So this, again, if my physical switch that I've got this server connected to is using VLANs and I have VLAN tagging enabled, so it's on a trunk port, then I can specify which VLAN I'm going to use for this virtual machine. So I can set up different virtual machines in different VLANs to help keep their ta traffic separate from each other. We'll deal with that more when we deal with VLANs in other sessions. Okay, last one down here is enable bandwidth ma uh, management. And this is kind of the same thing as the processor and the memory. I can set a minimum bandwidth that's always reserved for this device and this device only. No one else can use it. It's that reserve. And the maximum is the upper limit of what this can use. So the idea here being that I can choose for some devices to maybe have them use a little bit less bandwidth to reserve more bandwidth for other virtual machines that I'm going to want some additional speed off of. All right, so that's our hardware. Then we have our management down here. This is the name and notes about the machine. Integration services, what are we allowing uh, to communicate between the guests and the host operating system? So operating system shutdown, the ability to issue that shutdown remotely, time synchronization, data exchange, heartbeat, backup, and guest services, which is the only one that is disabled by default. The checkpoints defines how our checkpoints work, and we have two different types of checkpoints, production checkpoints and standard checkpoints. We can also choose to disable checkpoints entirely. Production uh, checkpoints are actually a little more stable. They don't include information about running applications, whereas standard checkpoints do. So you kind of got to trust the operating system uh, to manage that. But they can be a little more stable and be less likely to cause some corruption. So that's probably if you're running a production server, that's going to be your better option. Standard checkpoints will capture the current state of applications, whereas production checkpoints don't. And then your last option down here is to use automatic checkpoints. Because of some of the problems checkpoints can create, I normally don't recommend that. Now, I'm not totally against checkpoints. If you need it before doing like a major update, you're going to do Windows update or something like that, you might want a checkpoint just in case something goes haywire and an update screws up your system. Once you've ran for a couple of days afterwards, you can delete the checkpoint if you know everything's working great. If for some reason that checkpoint does create major problems, then you can revert back. So they're fine. I tend to not like the, using automatic checkpoints, however. All right, last two things. Automatic start action. What do you want to uh, this virtual machine to do when the physical computer starts? You can do nothing, in which case this machine will stay, this virtual machine will stay off. You can automatically start if it was running when the service was stopped, which means the server shut down, or you can always start. And that's going to kind of define, or this is going to decide what happens typically in the case of a power outage or something like that, or a system failure. So if the system goes down, let's say there's a power outage, you've got your system on a UPS, but after a little while, the UPS battery starts to die. So it sends a shutdown to the host operating system. The host operating system shuts down to protect itself. Well, when power is restored, system comes back up. What do we do? Do we want to automatically restart these virtual machines or not? And that's what these settings are about. 
So if this is a machine that you always want active, then yes, always start this virtual machine automatically. If it's a machine that you don't want always active, you only want it active sometimes, then you set it to do nothing or automatically start if it was running during the shutdown. Now, one other thing to be aware of, sometimes if you, let's say you've got four virtual machines running on this physical device, when this physical device comes back up, you may want those machines to come up in a specific order. For example, you might want your Active Directory domain controller to come up first, and you might want other things to come up a little bit later. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is you may want those services available on like your domain controller to the other servers before they come online. The other is sometimes if you have all machines try to start simultaneously, it can really slow down the process because all of them are trying to read from the hard disks at the same time. Sometimes you want to space those out so things come up a little bit smoother. And that's what this last option is about. Specify a startup delay between virtual machines. So, or specify a startup delay to reduce resource contention. There we go, between virtual machines. So I might want, want one of them, like my domain controller, to come up right away. Another one I might want it to come up five minutes later. So I might set a delay of 300 seconds. My print server, I might want to be one of the last ones to come up. So I might set like a 600 second delay and have that one wait 10 minutes before it comes up. So that's what that startup delay is for. Last option down here is automatic stop action. What do, do, what do you do to this virtual machine when the physical computer shuts down? We can save the machine state, turn it off, or shut it down. Save the machine state basically hibernates the system. Turn off, basically you pull the plug. Hold the power button in for seven seconds that forces that system to go down. It doesn't go down cleanly, it just forces power off. And last option is to shut down the guest operating system. So there we go. Those are most of our options for configuring and managing virtual machines. And we'll go through those options a lot when we are trying to fine tune performance, especially processor, memory, network settings. Those are ones that we will adjust on a regular basis because typically the things that are going to slow your system down the most are going to be the processor, the memory, the hard disk especially. We've got a few less options to deal with that. And network. Those are typically your four choke points that slow things down. So this is how you can kind of manage some of those choke points and balance some of your usage. Now, we said when we started all of this that Hyper-V and virtualization gives us some very cool options for managing our virtual servers, and it does. But one of the things we got to be aware of is that we are now dealing with resource contention. So if I have four physical machines running four separate, four physical servers running four separate server operating systems, they're never going to conflict with each other for memory, processor time, network bandwidth, anything like that. Now, I may be wasting a bunch, but they're not going to be in conflict for it because they each have their own dedicated resources. Once I move those all onto as virtual machines onto one physical system, now I have contention. And so that's something I need to be aware of. So one of the things we're doing, if we're running a data center with virtual machines, one of the things that we're gonna have to do is monitor performance and balance resource contention to make sure that we get the type of network and system performance that we're hoping to get.